We're in field one at the Giving Garden at Franklin First United Methodist Church. And it's late-ish September, and we're gonna be talking about butterfly migration. And Rita Venable, butterfly maven extraordinaire, is gonna <laughs> tell us all about it. Rita, I'm looking at just amazing flowers here. Uh, well, in my book, Golden Rods are the name of the game. Yep. In Tennessee, uh, we have over, 12, 13, 14 species, and you can plan your garden so that you start in late August mm -hmm. and you just keep going all the way through. Some will last until a hard frost. And even after that, they turn, they, if the snow falls on them or whatever, they have these cottony heads, they're gorgeous. This one right here, it's Rigida. Rigida. Yeah. Yeah, it does uh, spread and it sprinkles too, so we had to stake it. But it was worth it because it's covered with bees that have pollen on their legs, and yes. this indicates a female. Okay. Okay. Is it's, that right? Yes. So if a bee it's has always a pollen, female. It's if a she female. Ha yes. Gotcha. Always. And butterflies love this. Butterflies too. love this. I've got so many pictures of monarchs on this, of gulf fritillaries on this, of mm -hmm. everything, and also these little soldier beetles mm -hmm. that are on here, and these are mating right here I too. I can see they're. They doing... are so beneficial. They're larvae will eat things that are bad for the garden, and it's just, it's just, uh, they're wonderful. Oh, that's so we wonderful. like soldier beetles. So soldier beetles are a gardener's friend. Yes, and we want the bumblebees up here in particular because we grow a lot of tomatoes and, yeah. we, and they pollinate they do. a lot yeah. of tomatoes. So it being late in September, this is really blooming at exactly the right time for it, monarchs, isn't it? It is, it's perfect for monarchs. If you keep the goldenrods going, you'll cover not only early migrators, mm -hmm. but the big migration in the middle and then the, the trailing off at any rate all of them are gearing up to leave and so they're storing fats they're trying to get um Which and the bees are too yeah they're they're and pollen is so yes, rich the for pollen, that yeah. it, and this is wonderful it's a uh, big and it's sticky and it's very nutritious so so it's giving them a ton of food right giving here. them a ton of food and we like that uh, this is another goldenrod, yeah, I see this and here. as you can tell it's already peaked mm -hmm. this is rugosa rugosa and uh -huh. um it, it came on about uh, three or four weeks ago. But as and you now, can see, it's still just finishing up. Yes, yeah. and see, this is what I'm talking about, a succession of goldenrods. Mm -hmm. So you, you, as one's fading, the other one's coming on. And um, it's right in front of this mountain mint. Oh, one of my which, favorite plants. Yes, I also recommend heartily. Um, they keep, they have a long bloom period they also, do. and they appeal to a lot of different beneficial insects. Yeah. And it's edible. You can take these leaves right off. It's a native, mm -hmm. and you can put them in your iced tea or whatever. It's a great plant. And it is a mint family member. And one of the things, the flowers are actually really tea tiny. They're right around these sort of little mini cauliflower looking heads. Mm -hmm. But the bracts around them are these kind of frosted glaucous things, and it gives a lot of impact in the garden. I grow these because I think they're great looking. Yeah. Not only that, because of that long flowering time. I get everything from from tiger swallowtails in July through migrating monarchs mm -hmm. on these in September because yeah. it's such a great plant. They're great. They do spread. Mm -hmm. So you need to They do. I like any mint. I like to kind of yeah. either watch it really closely or give it a or pot it in or a pot. Grow <laughs> yeah. in a pot or yeah. keep it within a, a little brick border so yeah. I know okay, you're spreading yeah. too far. Yeah, I've got do. it in my house beside my driveway yeah. and it works great. Yeah. It's a really rugged plant, no care. Very rugged. Yeah. Yes. Well, here's a goldenrod that's just a about to start blooming here. Yes, this one's coming on, what we call coming on. And it's, you can see the rugosa and then the um, rigida there and now the seaside. This is seaside and, uh, goldenrod. Seaside goldenrod. Mm -hmm. We grew, we started it last year and uh, it came back. Mm -hmm. And it's been uh, a wonderful, bright, beautiful spot in the garden, uh, in this insectary uh, for late September through October. These are the flower buds, these little chartreuse parts. Yes, parts. and they're starting to turn. Yes, they are. And very soon the insects will start gathering on them even before the flowers fully open. I see soldier beetles already. Yeah, it's, jumping it's the gun. like they're, yeah. they're deciding, this is where I'm going to be next. Yeah, So <laughs> checking it out. What we do on this is um, when it dies back, and it does, you can see here's one right here yeah. that kind of did. We just kind of cut it back and we lay those right in there because we would love for that seed to just keep yeah, making new just, seasides. Sure. In the garden, Golden rods, you know, we think of them as weeds in America, in Europe they don't, but uh, 
they often have a kind of a big boisterous wild kind of uh, habit which doesn't lend itself to a formal garden setting so when I put these in in gardens for my clients I, I often will use them like at the back of a border mm -hmm. you know so that they can be contained you can even use peony hoops or rings around them if you want to compact the growth habit a little mm -hmm. bit more and then hide they, the bottom they of like the plant. To spraddle. They do like they tend to like to spraddle and that's simply because it allows more air and light and they do better that way. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are varieties of goldenrod that are very garden worthy. Yes. Yeah. So these big guys you can use but there are plenty available that are great for nectaring and pollinators yes. that and are all, also good garden subjects. Yes, it all depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. From anywhere from formal to okay with a little informal to totally out in yeah. a big field. Wild. I mean, yeah, wild. Like we've got four mm -hmm. acres and we can do whatever we yeah, want to. Sure. That's a big difference. Right, so sure. there's a golden rind just about to suit every purpose. That's great. You just have to really look at them. Yeah. And do a little homework. Yeah, do a little homework. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Well, Rita, one of the great things I know about zinnias is that they are such popular plants with butterflies that they not only attract the local guys, but they also attract the ones that are migrating through. That's right. They have such a long bloom period, but um, the great thing in the fall is that they're still full of nectar, and not just monarchs use them. Uh, they come through in mid-September usually, give or take a few weeks based on the weather, but also cloudless sulfurs migrate. Like those big yellow ones we're Those seeing. big yellow yeah. ones right there that's nectaring on the zinnia right now. They come through, and we're starting to see more of those right through now. Mm -hmm. Also common buckeye also migrate through, sometimes as late as November. Wow. And we'll see them. some of the skippers migrate. We really don't know the total migratory paths of all of these, but um, we do know for sure that things show up. Right. And in Tennessee, they show up because I have the records all the way through December. Wow. We are getting warmer to the point where if we can keep the flowers going and the restaurant open, the butterflies will have a place to go. And that's a great thing. One of the glories of the autumn in the eastern U.S., which is the New England aster. Oh, yes. Yes, love that plant in all its many forms. There's a bee on yep. there right now. They love them. The butterflies love it. Uh, it's got lots of pollen. It's just... Um, it's good for beneficial insects. There's a little soldier beetle on there now. I've taken pictures of migrating monarchs on these, and that orange on the purple is pretty spectacular mm -hmm. photo Gulf op. The gold as well, <laughs> yes. and the cloudless sulfurs, oh, the big yellow on so the purple beautiful. is, yes. And this is a really great garden plant. And there are dwarfer forms. This is the, the sort of the wild form. It gets mm -hmm. three to four feet tall, but there are dwarf forms that you can buy that, that bloom, still have the same kind of flower form and are shorter and, and a little tighter in the garden. But if you want to grow the tall kind, which is certainly spectacular, you can plant things around the base of it because they can get a little leggy at the bottom. But if mm -hmm. you have lower plants around the bottom, mm -hmm. it looks great. So Rita, I want to tell you how much I love your book. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Glad you like of, it. Butterflies of Tennessee. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Labor of love. It, well, it, it shows and it's a really a beautiful, wonderful handbook and I find it useful. I use it all the time. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look things up in it sometimes. Um, flight periods in particular. Yeah. Like it just really was the purpose is to give people a tool. Yeah. To find things on their own. And it does, but it not only tells you what they look like, but it also tells you what they like to eat and how, you know, how they behave yeah. and how to find them, and which is, I find so useful. It's a oh, really great resource. Good. Thank you. Oh, Thank my you pleasure. so much. And I want to talk about things butterflies love, like this canadensis goldenrod canada goldenrod folks and this this is just an amazing this it looks like it's vibrating it's it got does so many, it's just <laughs> dancing so many bugs it's dancing it. with bees and yeah. beneficial insects and everything so and we've seen a buckeye come cruise and nectar mm -hmm. and, and po get pollen on it just just a fabulous plant this is another one that is at the height of monarch migration season it's doing its thing it's, it is timing is perfect it's perfect and in this field where there's milkweed down there milkweed right beside mm -hmm. it it just tells the monarchs come on in this is we got food we got a hotel here just come on in so and speaking yeah. of milkweed we found something really cool so monarch's favorite larval food what yes. the caterpillars love to eat oh yes any kind of milkweed milkweed yeah and even though it's monarch migration time, we found 
a monarch caterpillar. Yes. So even though it's the middle of migration season, yep. they're still making babies. They are. We don't know if this is a local population or if um, they really don't go into um, reproductive diapause in some areas. And But here we are. You know, this, this should be an adult butterfly on its way to Mexico by now. And it's got another, at least another week or two, depending on weather, yeah. once it goes in the chrysalis. And um, that little one we found that's mm -hmm. only that's less than a half inch, I mean, it's got a month to go. Wow. So, uh, but it could make it. You know, it could still make this, sure. it. It depends on the frost, on the weather, sure. and the amount of rain we have, the temperatures. So, right. um, well, that's, but that's why you leave the restaurant open right. because you don't know, you know, what's going to, sure. what's going to be. For here. sure, and we need to preserve our monarchs as much as we can. Yes. So. Yes. Well, I just want to thank you so much for sharing your butterfly wisdom with us. It's just been terrific, and what a happy find that was. Oh, I know it. On. I love it. Love it. Well, thank it's you. always good to see a monarch. Yeah, it is. And to see you. Yeah, well, and you too. <laughs> Great to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.